When you think of words to describe a slug, cute is probably not at the top of the list. But take a look at the Jorana parva, a sea slug that's taken the internet by storm as the sea bunny. Now tell me slugs aren't cute. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. This sea slug is only 2.5 centimeters long. Those long pointy ear looking things are actually sensory organs called rhinophores, which detect chemicals in the water that help the sea bunny find food and mates. The tail looking things on their behinds are actually their gills. And although it may look cute, the sea bunny is highly toxic. It steals its toxins from the food it eats. In particular, its favorite diet, sponges. I kind of relish the idea of a cute little sea bunny eating SpongeBob SquarePants. Is it just me? Similarly, these incredibly cool looking blue slugs called Glaucus atlanticus feed on dangerously venomous prey such as the Portuguese man o' war. So how do they avoid getting stung? They transport the toxin to specialized sacs at the end of their finger-like appendages and then use it against their enemies. They were first discovered by Captain Cook on his second voyage to the Pacific. Okay, how cool is that sentence? I'm gonna say it again. They were first discovered by Captain Cook on his second voyage to the Pacific. Another sea slug that is what it eats is Elysia chlorotica, and this one is gonna blow your mind. This green sea slug is part animal, part plant. Well, sort of. It's the only multicellular animal known to create chlorophyll. It steals genes from the algae it eats and carries out photosynthesis. It can live for months without eating anything. They're incorporating DNA from a completely different species into their own. I think it's safe now to say what we're all thinking. Sea slugs, they're like Pokemon. There are over 2,300 species of nudibranchs, which are the type of sea slugs shown here. Often, the bright colors are connected to aposematism, warning colors to let predators know they are poisonous. However, some types of sea slugs, such as the Aplesia californica, or California sea hare, have other forms of defense beyond not tasting good. The sea hare squirts an inky cloud at its attackers, such as starfish or lobsters. I know what you're thinking. The slug releases the ink, the lobster sits there for a bit, the cloud dissipates, and the slug is still there, having moved two centimeters, if it's lucky. Not exactly a clean getaway. However, the ink does far more than hide the slug's movement. Their ink has three separate characteristics that help the slug escape. First off, the ink contains an amino acid called taurine that smells so good, the predator drops the slug to eat the new, tastier morsel. Scientists say it's like having a piece of broccoli, and then someone comes around waving chocolate. Secondly, the ink has a chemical effect on the nervous system of the predator, confusing and slowing it down. Lastly, the ink is sticky, gooping up sensory organs such as the lobster's antennae and slowing them down further. However, the sea hare would much rather make love than war. When the California sea hare gives off its aphrodisiac hormone, which is between a hundred and a thousand times more potent than any human hormone, they form a conga line of sex. This chain of riled up slugs sometimes reaches up to 15 to 20 animals and lasts several days because slugs are hermaphrodites, having both male and female sex organs. They are all feeling the love. The first slug acting as a female, the middle ones acting as both, and the back one as the male. Unfortunately, it gets weirder. The Chromodorus reticulata have disposable penises that they can regenerate every day. Scientists are not completely sure why they do this, but it's thought that it can be used to scrape out rival sperm while avoiding the difficult step of removing their penis, which has backward pointed spines from their partner. Not cool. And weirder still, the Siphopteron quadrispinosum, which can be found off the coast of Australia, have sex by stabbing their penis into their mate's forehead. These sea slugs have branched penises, each side nearly as long as its body. One end is inserted into the other slug's female reproductive organ, while the other is shoved right between their partner's eyes. The whole thing takes about 40 minutes. It is thought that they may pick this location for injecting seminal fluid because it affects the central nervous system and increases the chances of successful conception. The nervous system of a sea slug is a relatively simple one with only 20,000 neurons compared to the approximate 100 billion found in humans. However, 
Even though it is a simple organism, it is still able to learn. Here is a video of one sea slug trying to eat another sea slug. Unfortunately for the predator in this pair, the sea slug he's trying to eat is a Spanish shawl, one of the slugs that steals stinging cells from the jellyfish it eats. The prey is quickly dropped and the attacker makes a beeline away from the Spanish shawl. Okay, let's speed it up to make it a little more dramatic. When the same sea slug was introduced to the Spanish shawl again, it took one sniff and moved on, learning to avoid that costly mistake. But let's get back to sea bunnies. To understand them better, I'm gonna need some help from my friend Reej over at Animal Wire. Go check out his video on sea bunnies. Like, comment that I sent you, and subscribe. If you like this channel, I can guarantee you're gonna like his. In each episode, he looks at the weirdest animals that I've ever seen. And his channel is all about celebrating nature, something I can get behind. I'm a huge fan, and I hope you will be too. So what animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments, and make sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching! Yo, dude, sweet creature.